And we're live! Oh. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the Tireside Gathering! That was John Wood talking about... What were we saying again now? Uh, it, it, we're fortunate I wasn't cussing. <laughs> I, I have to work on that myself, too. No, but like I, what I was saying was... it Closer? Yeah, could you pull the mic just a little closer? People want to hear your beautiful voice. No, I was just saying that I'm, I, I'd never really watched Twitch prior to... Really? To, no, I, not that I can... Well... I race, and I guess I did with I race, and a little okay. bit, yeah. But it's a it's a neat little neat little avenue. Wow. Well, we totally segued into a conversation before getting the intro started. Let's yeah. let's put a pin in that. Also, because I have more questions about that. Welcome to the Tire Side Gathering. I'm your host Zane, the Bearded One, your guru of everything esports, NASCAR heat, and hopefully I can learn some things about NASCAR. You know, I'm not going for Rutledge Witch's Rutledge Witch's job, but. Hey, we could share the time limelight every now and then. We got a jam-packed show for you today. As you saw, John Wood is hanging out. We're going to be talking about his history, NASCAR, the eNASCAR Heat Pro League, the gauntlet. We got him on the gauntlet, folks. It was kind of interesting and entertaining. We also have JRM Motorsports, JRM Motorsports driver for the eNASCAR Heat Pro League, Keffer, coming and hanging out with us as well. He'll be on in the second half of the show. That's going to be really interesting. But I want to talk to the man, the myth, the legend, John, Mr. Wood. What kind of experience do you have in broadcasting? You a lot. You've a pretty good job. A with lot, this. man. So I actually worked in television and radio for about five years. I did well, iRacing. I feel like this is my show. Okay. Yeah. All right. John Wood Show. So yeah. I uh, did television and radio for about five years. I feel like I'm doing a job interview for Wood, Wood Brothers right now. <laughs> um, and then I went to uh, broadcasting iRacing races. I was a commentator and producer for that. So I did that for about four or five years, paid my money to pay my subscription cars. And then Twitch. YouTube, doing reviews, working in the gaming industry. I actually retired from that and did full-time content creator. So it's fun. You're doing fine as a host. Have you hosted a show before? No. Like, you're just like... Well, I do. I'm, I, I get notifications when my refrigerator door is open. What? I Who's got open? this new... I guess my six-year-old, Riley, he's probably digging in the refrigerator. But yeah, it's... Uh, Does it tell you... Who pops up on my watch. If oh, no, he's asking if you could pull it down for you. Sorry. Our awesome producer... Yuli, you can't see him. He's a ghost in the background, a ghost in the shell. He's, he's yelling at John to do better about his mic. But, hey, you can do whatever you want, John. You're the guest. Yeah, it's my show. It's John's show at this point. Yeah, but so, no, for real. Um, it's really cool. Glad yeah. to be here. So, so your watch, does it tell you what's pulled out of the fridge or just tells no, you when it's, it's open and closed? It, it just tells me when it's open. Okay, closed. gotcha. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's cool. I didn't get the one with the screen on it with like where you can... Gotcha. Type stuff, and that's... Oh, the one that could order food for you yeah, when you start cam- running out? Yeah, cameras inside. What? There's cameras yeah, inside they, of fridges now? They can literally change your mind. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. You want Pepsi, not Coke. Well, I really like Coke. No, you want a Pepsi. Trust me. It's, it's kind of how that fridge sounds. Pretty it's much. scary. So, uh, with you, you were talking earlier, like, this is your first time really getting into Twitch and watching Twitch, right? Mm-hmm. Well, so you said the Pro League is what kind of brought you into the fold, or was it a little bit before that? Pro League would be what has gotten me familiar with it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it it was no more than I would see it on my friend Jim's Twitter page or Twitter like a tweet, mm-hmm. uh, Twitch dash TV dot whatever. Click the link and that's it. But now, like, I kind of kind of gotten a little bit more involved in it and kind of understand it. And very cool. Um, Are you going to start streaming yourself? No. No. Nothing like that. No. no. Well, you're technically doing it right now. Yeah. Yeah. What we're getting to do is get a controller in your hand. Well, no. Are you a big we're, gamer? I was into gaming PCs for a while. I tinkered with building them and all that. Okay. Um, but and I do have a PlayStation Four. Okay. I've got the NASCAR Heat game. Yeah. You're playing three with, today though, weren't I you? I was. I was practicing for that gauntlet thing that you were talking about <laughs> that I did so poorly on. How do you, How do you know that we haven't shown anything yet? Don't ruin the surprise. Well, I didn't say what. I didn't say I ran a minute twenty four seconds. <laughs> Is that really what you ran? Because I don't even know what you ran. Dang, it's that's like that. All right, put the bets out now. If, if John ran a minute 24, somebody's getting an invisible $5 somewhere. Uh, so really, John, let's talk about you for a moment. Let's do it. You're, you ran NASCAR. Yep. And I'm going to be honest, I actually raced your truck in NR2003. 
I would say Dirt to Daytona was the best game. Really? Yeah. Really? I, the the reason down. I... What is it about Dirt I mean, to Daytona? I, I, of, of, the, of the vintage games. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I'm not knocking NASCAR heat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> of the vintage games, that was the best one. What about it? What, what was it that... I don't know. The, the trucks were just... It was only the trucks, too. There was just something about it. I used to actually race with Matt McCall. Okay. Matt was our... I'm ashamed of... Well, I guess I can admit this now. But he was our DD. Mm-hmm. So Matt would come over when we wanted to go drinking and party and you know, going crazy. Yeah. And um, we would always race right before we would go out or come back or whatever. He would always beat me. But there was just something about that game. It was trucks at day, at, uh, at Texas. Okay. Just can't beat it. Wow. It, it was the best. Would you still go back and play it to this day if someone if was I like... If I had it, yeah. All right, yeah. we're... If you have Dirt to Daytona on any console, or, please. Yeah, or I guess you'd have to have a PlayStation. Or, are yeah. they backwards compatible? No, they're not backwards compatible, but you can find a PlayStation 2 yeah. for pretty easy. Like, yeah, I went to my buddy Elliot's house and played 2004 Thunder on a PlayStation 2 for about six hours. So we can find them. We can get it. All right, that's that's the next plan. Um, but let's talk about your, your history in NASCAR for a little bit, man. Like, how was it? What got you into the sport? What got you out of the sport? What brought you to more of the administration side and to the back room? Um, well, I was... Uh, my family's been in, in NASCAR forever, yep. and so that's kind of what got me started. I wasn't really good at anything else, so I figured I might as well give this a try. Um, worked my way up through all the you know local racing, uh, won a few truck races. I ran a couple of seasons in Xfinity. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't quite pan out. It was right around the time that, um, that, that the economy was crashing. We had lost our Air Force sponsorship. It was just a really bad time. And I felt like I would be better suited learning the business side of the team. And um, and, and now that's I, I kind of help oversee the commercial side. Um, we're your typical family business. Um, it's it's uh, my dad, his brother, his sister, and then there's three of us kids. Yep. The, me, my sister, my cousin. All of us are um, shareholders in the company, and we just do what needs to be done. It's, do you like working the commercial side, administrative side? Or do you miss driving? I like the esports side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's that's the new, a, a new venture that we've gotten into. You um, guys are good about these segues because that's what we're gonna talk about next. Yeah, no, <laughs> seriously, it's it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it it we originally were gonna just do i racing. We weren't at the time. We weren't uh, in in the RTA, and so we weren't gonna gonna have one of these uh, heat teams. Mm-hmm. And, and then it worked out that we did. So now we have all four, yep. and uh, it's it's really 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 had a lot of fun with it. My dad likes it. Um, I I told this story a time or two, but we were coming back from the Grand Canyon of all places, and I'm driving. We're in the minivan, and I'm running a hundred to get back to Phoenix because we it was the weekend that we were in Phoenix for the race. Okay, and I look over, and he is trying to refresh his phone to watch the finish of one of the i racing races. Really? So like. He's that involved. He he's, you know, he knows when Slade's winning a race. He knows. I mean, it, he 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 watches these races. It's crazy, probably more than I do. Wow. So um, it, it it's been a it's been a really neat thing to to be a part of. And I heard your dad. I heard a rumor that your dad is recently a video game convert. Like he's actually he's played a little bit he, with the eye racing he, he watches. Yeah, he, yeah, he did. Um, he's a. A little bit worse than me, but that's not saying much. I mean, that's bad, bad and worser. Um, but yeah, y'all don't Fortnite it up together. I, I, <laughs> I wouldn't know Fortnite from Fort Knox. Hey, I, I know I, a couple I, pro league players <laughs> that can give you a run around. <laughs> I, I, my my six year old wants to play it, but um, I, I don't. I, I haven't. I mean, I'm, I'm too. It's weird because I'm 37 and we we were cuz I, I was talking to the 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 PR lead from Spin mm-hmm. the other day it was might have been 2 days ago and she was telling us how this this esports thing really is a really good fit for them and all this and that talking about this demographics and whatever that stuff they talk about and she's saying how that esports caters to their age group that are 18 to 35 year olds and like my first thought was well that that's no that's not me i'm 37 now like you just <laughs> It sucks, man. Getting old. Yeah. It, it's it's just. I don't know. It. it I, yeah. Let's make you feel terrible. a little older, real quick. Let's talk about esports. You had the number one draft pick on PlayStation, back in Phoenix. You drafted the Wonder Boy Slade at number one. How is that? How was that feeling of being in the number one draft pick, getting that pick for him, and how has that turned out 
it seems it's gone well for you guys. You're locked into the playoffs. Got one more race before the playoffs start. Are you excited? Are you pumped? What's what's going through your mind right now for for the playoffs? Are you what's going through my mind immediately is that you just said we're locked into the playoffs. I don't know if that's true, but I'm gonna pretend, uh, you're like, close. I'm gonna like, pretend uh, like it's true. I'll, I'll 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 put one there for you and say you won a weekend. Yeah. But come on, you guys are up there in the points. You're not yeah, sitting tenth or ninth been, right now. It's been fun. Um, kinda don't like the whole averaging points out thing, but I mean that's you're gonna get seven people that like it and seven people that don't the yeah. people that are in the bottom seven are not going to like it but that's just how it is but Slade it, it's I, I've had a I've had a ton of fun with him um, he's a he's a he's a young kid mm-hmm. a, as you know so I spend just as much time asking his mom through text for permission for things as I do talking to him uh, he probably doesn't know that but, <laughs> um, I, oh and uh, your your boys in the chat Say hello to your third son, Slade. <laughs> what up, Slade? How's it going? Your dad's right here. He's hanging out with us today. He so so you know, just real quick, <laughs> we have a gift for those guys going out tomorrow. Slade wants to miss school. I told him that he needs a signed permission slip from you and his mom before he can miss school. Are you are you willing to help him out I a little would, bit? But I don't know if Dana will go go <laughs> for that. So you're going to school, boy. I'm sorry, man. We tried to help you out. I, I do got a question real quick. Who's uh, the? This is this is Jasmine. She's like I was asleep. Yeah. Um, Did she, she go to races she, with she you? Went, she went to Michigan this past weekend. What? My my wife was in Pennsylvania, and uh, I went a day early, and so I didn't have anybody to keep her. Mm-hmm. And so she went to Michigan. So I'm sitting on the pit box. We'll fast forward to race time. I'm sitting on the pit box. I had her on the pit box with me, yep. and and Ed's, Mr. Edsel Ford is sitting beside me here. So like I sit on the end. And my dad sits on the other end, and then in the middle, only two people can sit there throughout the year. It's either Paul's dad, John Menard, or Mr. Edsel Ford. Wow. One or the other. So he's there, and I'm trying to be on my best behavior. And I've got Jazz sitting over here on this side, just praying that she doesn't pee on him or something. (laughs) So I'm doing whatever. I look over, and she's in his lap. And I'm like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? Like, Oh, no. Snuck over there, but... um, he was cool about it, laughing, ended up holding her. So um, I, I joked that she's my dog tur. Dog tur. Dog, <laughs> dog tur. Yeah. Well, yeah. she's adorable, I got to say. Yeah. Are you taking her to Bristol? Are you going to Bristol this weekend? Yeah, I'm going, but I doubt she'll make that one. She, How went, do you... she went to the to the uh, the one in the spring. She you... got a little backpack that I put her in. No way. If I'm yeah, toting her around. You should have brought the backpack today. It would have been cool. But she's like, let me sleep. I don't have to smuggle her in here. True. You're, you're absolutely right. It was a no-scooter zone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> As you can see, we, you burnt out a little bit, and they can't see it. But oh, the tire, yeah. 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 Um, so speaking of Bristol this weekend, how do you feel going into Bristol with the team and just, you know, Paul? It's been a rough year. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Uh, last year, you would think that, you know, we would have had more momentum going into our second season. Mm-hmm. But last year was probably – we probably had better – better speed gotcha. uh, we had a lot of bad luck and crashes and wheels falling off and different things last year this year we've every, you know every, everything's been pretty indestructible but um, I think we had better speed last year so that that's kind of been frustrating but you know what can you do but excited for under the lights Thunder Valley yeah you know the, the night race at Bristol is always a good one what, always what is your favorite race out of the year just out of curiosity what do you like going to the most Uh, I don't know. Martinsville's are, both Martinsville's are good. Yeah. Um, Daytona in July just because that ties into a vacation. You know, going to the beach. I don't know. All of them. All of them. Uh, none of them. None <laughs> all, of them. All of them. Whatever. That's, that's a very indecisive answer. Yeah. I don't know which one to pick here now. I don't either. Dang, John. We'll just say pass. Oh, cr- on, to, on to the next one. I didn't know we could do that on this show. So we, we kind of asked a couple of questions on social. I'm pulling up my phone here. Um, so we're going to run you through a couple of questions. Uh, one of the best ones so far is actually from your driver. Uh, they say you have an affliction for Chick-fil-A or an addiction to Chick-fil-A, really? Can you elaborate well, I, a little bit? I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I just go twice a day. Twice a day? Yeah. But the same one or no. like? So, oh, man, you're asking <laughs> oh, all these no. stupid questions. So, <laughs> In the mornings, I go to this one that's like double. I drive past one to go to another one in mm-hmm. the morning because I, I got a really good friend that, that meets me there. I like 
and another stupid thing, but like they put more strawberries in the fruit cup at the fir- at the one in the morning. So I get I get better strawberries. I just I don't know I just do. And then for lunch I go to the closest one because by that time Riley and Bailey have made me mad and I, I don't want to go as far as to that far one. So I go to the one in Harrisburg. Oh, okay. But I do go twice a day. I've got sixty one thousand Chick Fil A points, which is like if you break that down into what that's worth, I think it's like four hundred packs of hash browns or maybe 75 salads for free if i need them wow i I I, save them for a rainy day in case this racing thing ever blows up i can eat free for a year (laughs) i'm going to lunch with you one day man you know where the good chick-fil-a's are i almost actually ordered you chick-fil-a based off some suggestions today but Sadly, the pizza never showed up, and we're a little sad. Uh, here's an actually really good question. It's from Justin Mounds, and he asked, uh, how often does Wood, Brother Ra- uh, Wood Brothers Racing talk about the Pro League? Uh, interested to know if it fits into the day-to-day operations of the actual race team. Uh, I don't know that I would say that it fits into the day-to-day, but I, I would say that it's very important to – well, I know it's very important to spin mm-hmm. the – you know, that that's our esports sponsor. Yeah, it's what what we have on both or all, all of our cars. In fact, uh, the Dockless Scooter Company that you see in almost every big city, where you just ride up, scan your phone, hop on a scooter, and there's some here in Charlotte, off. right? Yeah, yeah, they're here. Um, but no, it's it's um, it's something that I think everybody needs to be aware of. It's it's on everybody's radar screen mm-hmm. because it is. A change in landscape in the way that people consume entertainment. Uh, you look at the prize money for that Fortnite championship that just happened. Three hundred million it's or something stupid. stupid. Yeah, like I may be I mean, off on the couple hundred million there, but it was it's huge. ridiculous. But like, if you'd have told me, if you'd have told me a year ago, if you'd have told me this time last year that we would be paying two guys to race a video game for our race team, mm-hmm. I, I would you laugh at me? It. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have believed it. I, I wouldn't. Um, it's it's crazy. Good it, venture though. Do you, you're yeah, enjoying the ride? I am. Between you, between it and, and the I racing program, both, and, and a lot of people think that they they compete and they don't. They're they're, I don't know if symbiotic would be the word, but like they need to coexist and both need to succeed for this whole esports venture to to work. So yeah, that's that's a common misconception that there's animosity between the two and there's not. It's both got to. Both of them have to work, and that's that. And you so have one of the best eSport iRacing drivers as one of your drivers, Ray Alfala. Yeah. And I assume you Slade and Casey and all those guys kind of co- conversate yeah, and work K- on stuff. Slade, Slade, is, Slade is completely – he knows more about how those guys do than I do probably. He, he's, he pays attention. But, no, uh, Ray – Ray's had a rough – not a, yeah, Ray's had a rough season. Yeah, he's had a rough – let's just not <laughs> he's, sugarcoat it. He's had been, a rough season. It's been bad. Chris, I think he's flipped twice. I think, yeah, well, at least. Um, but yeah, we we finally finally got back on the right track. He he finished fifth in the last race, and Chris finished second. So I'm thinking that things are turning around. Mm-hmm. And then I get a, a message from Chris about two days later. Hey man, um, I got too many incidents points, so I'm suspended for the next race. <laughs> like, what dude, what do you do in a situation like that? Sit it out. Is it really just you, like almost back in the old Winston days? You don't have a guy to run the seat. You have no one to run the seat. Wow. I, I, I haven't asked. Okay. If, I, I don't know, but I mean, yeah, they're just it just sits out. I, I don't. They can appeal it and do all this stuff, but I, I don't think there's much to much it. Recourse, no. I think I think it's interesting that you talked about the relationship between iRacing racing and the Heat guys, right? They're different. They're they, different. And they're enough different that they can both work. I yeah. keep I keep going back to that, but it, it's important that that both succeed. It really is. Yeah. And and it's almost I always talk about we've all love racing. Yeah. We, regardless if it's road racing, oval racing, kart racing, we have this common ground of that we're race fans and we enjoy racing either be it on console or be it on PC, and we, and we both almost have to work together as a group yeah. to make the racing of esports grow. And you've seen the bickering back and forth, but I think you've starting to see those guys from that side of the fence and our guys from this side of the fence kind of come together and go, yeah. we have to support each other for this to actually keep growing and getting bigger if we want to see it succeed. And there's a there's enough difference in the two uh, race formats, race styles. Mm-hmm. The, the, the heat races are heat races, yep. more or less. They're short. 
you tune in. If you don't tune in in time, you're going to miss them. They're, they're just, you know, all packed into one little 30 minute or one hour, whatever it is. One hour. Deal. Let's, yeah. One hour um, show. It, it's, it looks like a video game. It is a video game. And that's that. Uh, the, the iRacing part is a completely different thing. It has a different core group of people that really care about it. It's like a simulation. It mm-hmm. looks like watching a real race. The races take a long time. Um, and it just depends on which one you prefer yeah. or both. It doesn't really matter, but they're different enough where they can both succeed and yeah, thrive on their and, own. Yep. I, I fully believe that. It's amazing. Um, so next thing here, and our producer's yelling at us because we've been talking for a while. I think I could talk to you for the next two hours. I'm not joking. Is we got to embarrass you. What or, is Mid-Ohio video? So Mid-Ohio was, we were going to talk about the Any Track, Any Series. Scratch. Way to go, John. We were going to show. Talk NH4. <laughs> All right, just show the board. John's ruined the surprise. <laughs> oh, look, see, there we go. We're waving a giant board now. So we had a giant board with all the stuff we were going to talk about because I forget things. Yeah. And one of them was going to be Mid-Ohio talking about any track, any series. Did you see that video? No. No? So in NASCAR Heat 4, you can now race any track, any series, as long as it's Xfinity. I saw, I saw that. That's, I saw, what, we're, yeah, that's yeah. what the Mid-Ohio yeah. was going to be about. Okay. We're going to talk on that a little bit and show it again. I just forgot to upload it, so I made a mistake. I'm sorry, guys. Hit me on Twitter later. So with it, it's it's a great new feature of it changes the racing. You can now have trucks at Watkins Glen. Uh, my favorite thing, Cup at to Iowa. Because I, I thought there was like a no. I don't know. Like no, 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 no. We could talk about the any trucks, any tracks, any series now. We can't talk about the cool stuff though. No, we can't okay. talk about all the cool. Like, I don't know. What are you talking about? Cool stuff. Like, what do you? What do you? Well, I just raced. Oh yeah, you did. Like that's uh, cool. The gauntlet. The gauntlet. Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna show the gauntlet. Now, now everybody. So I made the mistake because it was a mistake of mentioning. That I'd played NASCAR Heat Four on uh, Twitter. I mentioned it on the Wood Brothers Gaming account, uh-huh. not knowing that I probably shouldn't have mentioned it. Not because I wasn't supposed to, but because I got bombarded with questions. With yeah, like tell me about the physics and tell me about the algorithms and the like. These words I don't even know what they mean. Gotcha. But plain and simple, it looks so much more realistic, um, like the sky. <laughs> the, the sky. I mean, like in just dummy terms, it. The, all right, so I, I. It's no secret I played Heat Three today. I was practicing, and the only difference was that I had a controller. But I played Heat Three at home, and I played Heat Four here on, with a wheel, and and Heat Four was so much more like a real car. And again, it's still a video game. When you crash, you can hit a button, and it starts all over. Yeah, but it is enough different that you should buy it, and and I fully believe that. I think people. Will, that was unsolicited. Well, I mean, I'm, like, tell, I'm telling the truth. Like, yeah, no. Plus, Colin will appreciate it. But <laughs> it it's it's enough different that I think people will come back and say I wasn't lying about it. Like yeah. it it's there's enough differences in the realism and and all that other stuff that I think it's worth getting. Nice. And and I, I saw some of this. I heard. I watched your Twitter, and I, I got to say, when you said you ran into the tire barrier to go faster, I I, yeah. I couldn't stop laughing if for about you match ten minutes. The hood in just, just enough <laughs> to where the, the grill is touching the firewall. It knocks off about 400 horsepower, give or take, and then it's drivable. For oh me. For, <laughs> for me. Why don't we just get you a Studebaker and let you ride that around? Well, well I, let's show your gauntlet run, yeah, shall we? I have at it. Let's take a look at the gauntlet. Here we go. The arrows. So how did you film the car, though? How was the wheel? How was the pedals for you? Right there. So that would be turn one. Yep. Oh, jeez. I forgot that that so yeah this this was like my careful lap I was gonna do a careful lap just to get a lap time and then that other lap where I was just hauling ass and yeah. that one's where I hauled ass right into that wall off of turn four. Um, Somebody did. Yeah. Sorry. No, you're fine. It's great. Uh, but yeah, it. I did hear some cursing as you're running through. The gauntlet. It, was everything okay, or? Oh, that's the eye racing coming out in me. Oh, the hate, yeah, the like, anger. Yeah, like when, because I was sitting in that simulator and it brought back feelings of sitting in my <laughs> my eye racing rig. So naturally, I had to cuss. Do you still have an eye racing yeah. rig? I haven't turned it on in a while, but I've got. Uh, there's a there's a group that I hardcore associate with, and it's a the 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 league is called Court and. I know Court. C-O- C-O-R-T. I know Court. them. I actually know David Danboys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Danboys is a good guy. But that those are the ones, that, that that crowd are the ones that got me into iRacing, which I guess would transition into how we ended up doing this as well. Yeah. 
if I didn't, if I wasn't into iRacing, I wouldn't have known to say, okay, let's get into this esports thing. But um, I've had a lot of fun with them. And and there it is. Sorry to interrupt you. One twenty four eight seven. I think you beat Michael oh, Levine. I better have. You. I think you're technically better than Michael Levine at this point. I honestly will say this. I never thought that we would have a conversation. The words David Danboys would come out of my mouth talking to you. Yeah. I and, used to. And here's the other cool thing. Some of those guys do. Uh, graphics work, yes. like, with, like the paint schemes. He that, did Michael Annette's. He did uh, his, his Flying J. Uh, this, I, I call him an idiot because he kind of is, but Jim, um, Jim Gutta did the quick lane scheme. No that, way! Uh, that we ran, he's not an idiot, I just call him an idiot, but uh, <laughs> he did the quick lane scheme for, for the Michigan race last year. He's done a lot of videos mm-hmm. that we use, um, one of them, in fact, got showed last week, shown last weekend for a big event that Motocraft had in, in Michigan. Wow. They showed that at their presentation thing, that, and, and he's the one that made it. Um, Steve Lubinder, a lot of those guys, they've, they've helped me with a ton of stuff. Because I can't, I can't. I, Are you I, not a I'm graphic better, artist? Better, or? No, I'm better with crayons. <laughs> it, seriously, like I can't, and I, I say this a lot, but I literally cannot Photoshop at all. None. Wow. Zero. Like, I, I, I would do better with finger paints than I, I'm video voice. I'm cool. You try to get me to Photoshop something. You're going to get the worst Photoshop ever. I'm so not joking. They can do it. And I just, so I just, that's, that's what I called their races, man. That's so crazy. Like when I said, did I racing broad? I never thought we'd come full circle like that, but that was the series I called yeah. when I first started in iRacing. racing. David Dan boys, if you're watching, I'm going to hit you up on Twitter later and we're going to have a conversation about John. We've got court hats now. What? Yeah, Give got, me a hat. I want a hat. Um, oh, I can't wear it here, talk, but I'm going to wear it. Dave about that oh, one. man. New well, era got court hats. For John, us. I want to thank yeah. you for coming on, man. Do you have, what's your socials for the teams, yourself? What would you like to give out there for people who can follow you out there in the world? I don't know. I Just, don't know? Well, yeah. Well, we got Wood Brothers Gaming on Twitter and then um, the regular Wood Brothers team stuff. Gotcha. We'll have it in the description. We'll make sure everybody can get it so you can follow John and his team and watch the Pro League team. John, thanks once again for coming on. Yeah, man. And we're not going to wait to have you hit me up on Twitter to come on. We're going to bring you on next time right yeah. away. I'm sorry we missed you on the first yeah, episode. I'll let that it, one pass. It was a wrong number. We found out. My yeah. phones are weird. Okay. All right. Well, John, thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. That was awkward. As I'll get out, but we yeah, know, we'll work I'm on it. I'm reaching around the <laughs> All right, well, we'll be right back with our next guest, Keffer. Uh, thanks, John Wood, once again for coming on, and we'll be back in a few moments. Back a little bit. You were better when you sat back a little bit. Oh, oh look, there we go. Hey, we're trying to help Keffer. <laughs> Keffer's here. Jason <laughs> yeah. Keffer is here, the man for Junior Motorsports. How's it going, buddy? Good. Thanks for having me. Hey, not a problem, man. I got to say, it's you got to hear the stories from John a little <laughs> bit. Got to sit on the outside looking in. Yeah. How's it feel to be in the hot seat now? Uh, awkward. Awkward? Is that because <laughs> yeah. of the way you're sitting or because I, I got this, you set up, man? This chair, man, they're not they're not built for comfort. I told you. They are so comfortable. I'll get you a pillow. <laughs> it will work. I promise you. So... Well, they might be built for comfort, but they're not built for um, sitting up doing a, an interview. I guess. Okay, okay. Well, I'm more of a laid-back, casual kind of guy, so that's how we see this world end up. Yeah. Let's talk about you, buddy. <laughs> oh, sorry. you got to pull that mic closer to you, by the way. they got to be able to hear you. You're, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, so how are you doing, man? Like, you're here. You're going into Daytona. You, Junior Motorsports is looking good for the playoffs. How do you feel? Pretty good. I think the car, uh, our car is really good for the race. Um, we've had a lot of practice races the last few nights. Just working things out and uh, done really well. You're looking good. So yeah, we. Uh, I know it's just practice and everyone's kind of throwing the car around, but we started last and then drove up to the front and won the first three practices. So that does feel good. Yeah. You know? And then um, our team, Junior Motorsports as a whole. I mean, I think we're we're sitting really good in the points. We're not technically locked in. I guess I thought maybe we were, but we're like three points from being locked in. So mm-hmm. um, as long as uh, Tyler and I have a good night. You know, um, and you guys are looking strong at Daytona, both sides. Actually, yeah, those don't have a those don't have a bad night, right? Yeah. So, and uh, I know I've been trying to pull my weight. I know Tyler's back's probably hurting from. Uh, well, let's talk know. about that a little bit. <laughs> let's let, let's talk about it a little bit. 
I call it the fuel mileage blues for you. Yeah. You were so close to victory lane. We got about a 16-second clip of it. Mm -hmm. You're leading going into the final corner at Michigan last week. Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, I think it was actually a little bit before the final corner. Okay. But uh, essentially, uh, I was working with the 20. The 20 is uh, Voltage 20 or 19. I can't remember. But voltage is a 20. Him. I was working with him, and uh, we were trying to save. We worked. We planned on saving fuel. Mm -hmm. we, we knew that um, if we got in the pack, rode around a little bit, just didn't force it, uh, we didn't have to. Um, we didn't have to dive out uh, of line. You know what I mean? And, and make try to make passes and things yeah. like that. All we had to do was stay in line. Uh, we could get some drafts, get an extra lap on the first the first stop, mm -hmm. and then that would help us make it to the end. But we had to stay together. So whenever we started doing it and we started running, I actually came out of pit road first, or yeah, first, well first in our group, but about third or fourth on the track. I got a little greedy and uh, ran a little bit harder than I should have. Yeah. So whenever we came down to the last lap or two, the three guys behind me were all good on fuel, and I was actually hit. I hit zero down the back stretch on the last lap. So I thought I you. To, I thought your tires were I done. Like around. the way you went into three, you still had speed, and. The way you got shot around, I thought you were literally like just your right sides were done. You just had no tires. And to find out that you ran on the field, we should have a clip, but the clip's not working. So I don't know what's going on today, guys. It's a live show. You got to work with it. So to watch it, though, it, it, I'm going to use the hands as all drivers do, the hands. You go in, and here comes Slade on the outside. Mm -hmm. How like how pissed were you to have <laughs> that happen going into three? Or was it just like, man, I got greedy? Were you that? Did you I, have that recollection then at that point? I knew right then that uh... – I was in trouble. Really? And I knew I knew that um, Slade was going to get around me. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. So I just let him go, honestly. I kind of moved down a little bit, let him go, because, I, you know, worst case scenario, I'm going to finish fourth mm -hmm. in that situation, which is my best finish of the season. So I But you've been go. up there. Don't knock yourself short. Yeah. You've had some really good runs, just some bad late-ending late, late ending races, things like that happen. Yeah, things happen sometimes where, you know, you, did, you get kind of turned around. But um, I, I just let him go. Uh, and then I, I was hoping to stay in front of uh, – Voltage and or bags and uh, diesel or Penske as everyone knows them, um, just couldn't, just didn't. I just like I said, got too greedy, stayed out front too long, ran out of fuel, so was able to. I, coming out of four is when it started putting. But I think we your was, crew chief's in the chat too, by the way, right now. Oh, yeah, I, I think he's just saying it was pa <laughs> it was painful to make the call to let Slade pass, but it was the right call. I don't know, man. Your driver had no gas. I don't know if it's technically painful. It's just painful to watch yeah. as you got past, run out of fuel, but. Daytona, you feel better. You're looking really good in practice. Mm. Like Junior Motorsports, it's either you got the Earnhardt Junior magic going on over there, <laughs> or you guys have figured something out at those tracks because you are putting yourself up front. You're be you're really fast on the speed charts. We saw it last night. We talked about it a little bit mm. during practice where you saw those guys try to make a run on you on the last lap going into three, and you're like, well, I know what I need to do. We're not yeah. going to talk about the details because <laughs> drivers will figure it out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you you're you're taking a lot of that into those races. Like even Michigan, for example. You were still good in practice. Like yeah. you were the top three cars all week in practice. Go to the real race, and we see you up front. Like I was the guy going. I saw this happening. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't put invisible money on this bet, but I saw him going up to the front and winning it. Yeah. And and that's probably the interesting thing about it. And I one of the key things I think is so cool about you and what you do is your donation charity bets. Ah uh, yes. Can you can you give me a little insight of how these started and, yeah, and yeah. where they so came from? How it started is kind of funny. So it was actually trash talk. Okay. It was within discord on the team and um we were all given smoke also known as a uh, hot rod on the ps4 side so i don't know any smoke i know a hot rod yeah, though okay, hot rod well okay. we know i'm on the other like you know from nope the, so, nope like, nope all, i only know side. hot rod anyways hot rod so <laughs> hot rod. he was uh you know talking a little bit in the chat and the in um discord and uh it was going to chicago and we had raced a, a league race prior to that okay and he hit the apron like two or three times whatever so um, we were having the practices and he didn't come to the practice. So I said something like, um, I guarantee, uh, I was like, I guarantee uh, hot rod hits the apron during the race. And I was like, if he doesn't, I'll donate $50 to whatever charity you choose kind of talking trash. And then he didn't. So I, I ponied up the next day and then, um, it just kind of went where Joe was going to be running a wheel for the first time ever. Yep. At, was it, um, was it, well, I don't remember where it was. Oh no. God. It, it was Indy. a It Indy. was indie. So I said, okay, well, hey, man, uh, how about if I finish ahead of you, you know, we'll do it. And so we did that. And then I actually got a, uh, finished ahead of him. Yep. Uh, so he made the donation. And then uh, and then Mike and I were, you know, everybody wants to do it kind of now. Well, not everybody, but, you know, a lot of people. So Mike and I did it last week at Michigan. And then um, 
I think actually Tyler messaged me and said he wanted to do it. How are you going to uh, do that one? Like, is it if you finish in front of Tyler? Do, or? I guess finishing team position. Okay. Maybe, you know? A little but, team battle and a rivalry. Um, yeah, but it's kind of fun. Like I said, it started out as something kind of like, like I said, some trash talk, but it has turned into something nice. And usually we do like fifty dollars. Um, and it was Indy, is what is what Diesel saying in chat for that Joey bet. So it was Indy. Yeah, Indy. So yeah, usually it's like fifty bucks. I mean, I don't. You How know, much you in the hole this season? Me? Yeah. How much have you um, lost? In the actually, I uh, won Indy and Michigan, so I'm not. Ooh. Gonna, so technically, I would be up, but I did do the fifty for smoke for. Don't make a bet with this hot man. Rod for, hot rod. Um, yeah, I don't know a smoke. <laughs> man. I know a hot rod. I, I yeah, really know a yeah. SHG hot rod. I, I didn't know there was a guy named Smoke in the league, and I and I work very very meticulously with the league. <laughs> so you're correct. What? But you say you're correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So it, it's pretty cool. Uh, like. You know, I know fifty dollars doesn't sound like a lot, but we to all me have, it's a lot of we, money. Well, we all have different backgrounds, right? Yeah. So you know, all of us have different situations. So I feel that's a good number. Um, we could do more or less, you know. Hey, but, fifty dollars is the price of a brand new game, almost. Well, I was thinking too. You know, thinking of that though on the on the donation side, fifty dollars to the animal shelter is a is a big bag of dog food. Yeah. So, you know, something that they weren't going to get, you know what I mean, or, or or need. Now they can go buy that extra bag for the dogs they got there. And, you know. How many dogs do you have? I have. Well, it depends. At my house. Live with me, I have three, but technically my parents have two more up in West Virginia, so there's five running around. That sounded like a dog owner <laughs> statement when you're like, you can buy a dog bag, dog yeah, food bag yeah. and get another one. Yeah. yeah, I had to ask that question. So that actually became as, as like trash talk? It was like, hey, I'm going to do better than you. Yeah. Here you. Well, you know, Hot Rod, he, 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 uh, well, he likes to say um, he'll do a practice and then put the cover on it. I remember you know, that, yeah. So we were joking, you better take that cover off and not crash the field during the race, and that's kind of how it started, that's... but... Um, but hey, he didn't hit it, so you know. And he's doing. He's shown up to a lot oh, of practices yeah. lately too. Yeah, he so has, yeah. he's actually, actually taking the cover off a lot of times recently. Yeah, last night we had uh, 11? 11, cars. eleven. Eleven. Yeah. yeah, I think you had two lobbies yeah. of practice for eleven guys, and, and then the last one the, was six. The other guys weren't there. Was, I think one was actually doing something for a stream yep. for their team, and then the other two guys were working or something. Yeah. So I mean, you know, everybody was. Everybody. It's been a there. big turnout right I, now because it's that yeah. cutoff race, right? It's yeah. It's almost that second biggest race of the season because now the points line up, the top ten move on to the playoffs, the yeah. bottom four get left out, <laughs> yeah. and it's it's rough <laughs> to even kind of like fathom that process where it's like, oh man, yeah, are we gonna do it? Because I think you guys are up there, not quite locked in, if I remember correctly. I think uh, yeah, I'm not really good at math. That's not my thing. I'm not either. That's why I'm asking you. Uh, Nick Jones or somebody was crunching numbers one day, but um, you know, it was like. Uh, we're, th- we're three points away from being technically locked in on points because we don't have an event win. Yeah, true. But points-wise, I think we're 23 points ahead of the cut team. I think the most you can get in a weekend is like 26 maybe mm-hmm. or maybe it's 28. But, so we're right there. So, like I said, I think in Daytona, as long as we don't both finish 14 and 14, I think, you know. You have a good chance of yeah. walking into the playoffs. So, same thing for John. Mm-hmm. We're going to jump around a little bit. We have questions from the Internet. Oh, okay. Here we go. The Twitterverse has asked – one of the, I think this, I'm a foodie. I love food. So the first question is, uh, favorite pre-race meal? Um, well, you wouldn't think of it by looking at the screen here, but uh, I don't really eat before the races. Really? And I get, you know, I got uh, uh, some stomach problems from the military days, you know. So, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I can't eat before the race or I might not finish it. <laughs> so what about after the race? Do you have a favorite af- pre- post-race me- meal? Does beer count? <laughs> I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, uh, it nah. technically has hops and wheat and <laughs> barley, <laughs> so it's part. Of, I I really can't I'll say. This says, but um, I don't know. I guess uh, whatever. Like so, what usually will happen is like so. It's just myself and my daughter in the mm-hmm. house, right? And the dogs. So um, we'll I'll put we'll put something on, right? Like some type of dinner before the race to have it done. So whatever we've whatever we made, and usually on a Wednesday night it ends up being like. Um, some, some stuffed peppers, like Stouffer's or something like that, you know, that you I'm, put in the oven. Bro, you live how far from me? I'm coming to – I haven't had a home-cooked meal yeah. in a while. We're going yeah. to Keffer's house for dinner this week, I'm saying it. Yeah. Uh, so this is going to sound a really weird question, man. All right. Uh, you played Heat 4, mm-hmm. got your hands on a little bit. Mm-hmm. You played it when you came in for media day, and I know you were riding in that simulator as soon as you got done with the gauntlet. Mm-hmm. How do you feel? What do you think about it? You're, you're about to get into it going into the playoffs. It's um, it's awesome. Yeah? I mean, it really is. I, I like I – think heard john say like the sky right but yeah like, honestly i made a joke before the game um before we got to see it like hey is it gonna have the ferris wheel and turn 
uh, what three or three and four at Charlotte. It does, yep. you know. <laughs> but um, just playing it, I was sitting there playing it. I had it on expert mode. Um, granted, I was using your guys' wheel and setup. It was a little different than mine, but just you could feel the difference. Um, I ran like 20 laps of a race. Seven laps into the race, um, I was the car was running really good, really fast. Seven laps in, I go into a three like I had been, and all of a sudden you could feel the tires. I told start you, to right? Chatter, right? Like you're not, you're lost grip. You're sliding across the track, and you have to I had to change my entry. And um, I think a lot of guys on heat three just send it into the corner every time, right? And on this game, you can't send it. You have to back up the corners a little bit. You have to approach approach the corners to make sure you're going to get those that speed and run. So it's just amazing the graphics, yeah. the way it feels. Um, it's it's I like it. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. You you say something that's actually really interesting is the the send it into the corners. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually was playing four and I racing with my buddy uh, Elliot, who works here. He's a game designer, and one of the first things he said after probably 20 laps of running four and I racing was you've played way too much heat recently <laughs> because I was throwing the car, just forcing it in there. Mm. And while you were running Charlotte, I walked up to you and what I say is like run 15, 20 yeah. laps and you'll feel the difference. And yeah. right away, you, like you said, you feel the wheels chatter. I, I, I like the, someone made fun of me cause I quoted, I kind of paraphrased Michael Levine and it was last night during the driver's town hall was that first 10 to eight laps in the game and in, in a run, you're going to feel like a golden God on those four fresh good years. Mm. Once those tires drop, She's going to get a little loosey-goosey on you. You're going to have to start looking for grip, searching, feeling it. The track's going to work on you. Yeah, definitely. You'll see the different lanes. Like, you probably saw that as well. Like, AI were working hot top and bottom. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, okay, I'm used to them being in the bottom and me just <laughs> shooting around the outside. So now yeah. i got to pick my lane or go in the middle. So it's really cool for you to experience that. I can't wait to see you guys go to Vegas. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. And get your hands on it and, <laughs> yeah. and that first playoff race in it. That's going to be the real test because mm-hmm. – Everything you know, you guys know about setups, rules, or not rules, but setups in general, take it, take that book, pour some kerosene on it, light a match, throw it away. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to help you. And that's probably the craziest thing is the physics, the changes, the tire, the telemetry, the, just the model breakdown mm. is going to really change how people drive to more of a, a realistic feel and style. And I think that's what's really interesting to see you guys take it because you guys are pros. You're going to be going into the playoffs with a new game that you have a little bit of time with, not... What do you think? We had four months on Heat 3 before the qualifiers start. Yes. Yeah, and then you had two months of qualifiers and another two months of showcase races. So you had almost six months you know, in the bag of Heat 3 before you started driving on, on the Pro League side. Right. And now you're going into a brand new ball game. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting to see you guys take that battle. And anything can happen at Daytona next week. Like I'm watching the charts and, ho- and hoping you guys pull a win. <laughs> I'm wanting you to win so bad because you've been so close. After last week running out of gas, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm a Kaffir fan for the week. I got fans. <laughs> <laughs> I got fans. <laughs> don't, t- don't tell your mom I'm a Fairweather fan. I'm a bandwagon fan. I'll ride on a new hey, wagon. Think, uh, I'm pretty sure my, my mom and daughter are watching right now. Hey, so. hey you know, Mama Kaffir, yeah. how you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah. The uh, hype is real. Look at that. NH4 <laughs> hype. NH4 hype. Yeah. The hype is real. I will, uh, I will say going to Las Vegas, just playing that little bit right there, um, we do kind of joke that there's, what, hot lappers in Heat 3. There's people who hot lap and people who race. Yeah. I also see myself a racer. If you look at my qualifying, it's never that great. But you weren't top we get, five of the speed chart every, every day? I don't think I've qualified higher than seventh this whole season, right? But I've, I've made my way to the front. Um, with this new game and the way it felt and what I saw, just I was running Charlotte, um, the normal course yeah. in there. But... It's going to be whoever can figure out how to set up these cars and drive these cars and get the long runs out of them. Because after, like I said, after five, six, seven, eight laps, those guys that are the hot lappers, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to control it. I really don't. Because you're going to have to have your setup for these pro league races to be fast and be able to move around, like you said, yep. and, and be good on the long run. I know some guys, including myself, that are, I think will be ahead of the game on that. But... I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I hope, I hope it's us. Awesome. Well, and that's the interesting, <laughs> too, is we, we talked about it privately, and I've talked to the Pro League guys about it, and you guys are going to hear a little bit about it here now. Uh, just some insight on four. As we know in three, uh, you know, loose seven is probably the premier mile-and-a-half setup, and that car is good in four for probably the first 15 laps, and it gets looser and looser and looser like the real cars. You'll now get to feel that balance and that change. Like, I raced a preset one, which is the tightest setup. Anyone knows it's tighter than God. You can't really turn the car. <laughs> That first eight laps, you're fighting it. Yeah. By lap 11, lap 12, that car starts to loosen up. And you're like, wait a minute. I got a little movement in <laughs> yeah. this. And it feels good. So it's cool to see those changes and the evolutions of those those setups mm-hmm. and how those cars are going to handle. Because some of those guys are like, right now is a point in case. These pro guys, and, and you can attest to this, loose is fast in y'all's world, right? Right. 
Yep. And a lot of you guys are running those cars on the edge of loose mm-hmm. or the edge of spinning out, like right, like Kyle Bush loose. Oh yeah. And and to go into four, it's not going to handle the same way. Like it's going to be a completely different ball game for you right. guys. So I'm excited. I can't wait. I do want to talk about the gauntlet. All right. <laughs> but before we do, any track, any series, what do you think? Any track, any series. Um, I think it's awesome. I mean, I think it's something where, you know, this is a video game. You know, uh, we do have the pro league and, and, and everything. But at the end of the day, it is a video game. Mm-hmm. And what's awesome about that is not only can guys like me who, you know, live a normal life and work down the street here and, and now get a chance to play this game at 33 years old, <laughs> you know. We're the same age. Yeah, I guess so. Bro, I'll be 34 like, in like two weeks. But October, um, but uh, I f- we're the oldest guys <laughs> in the pro league. Oh god. <laughs> yes. But the thing is too is like it also gives you that ability to, um, you know, do whatever you want. So I mean, when you're sitting there racing, and you're like, hey, you know, I want to go to uh, what, what, what was the track? Um, Which one? Mid- was it Mid Ohio that you got? Yeah, out? yeah, it was the Mid Ohio yeah. with Cup cars. Why not? You know what I mean? Yeah. I think one thing that's going to be awesome will be, uh, I guess, Iowa in a Cup car. I mean, we watched the iRacing race on on TV there. Right, the All Star race ago. where yeah. they ran Cup at and Iowa. I was like, Dude, they're iRacing on uh, I ra- or Cup at Iowa. I was like, that's awesome. Yep. You know, and uh, I, so I think it's awesome. I think it's a great thing. I mean, the tracks are there, the cars are there. Why yep. not run them? I, I really <laughs> want it. Like I'm telling you, uh, trucks at the Glen, uh, Cup or Xfinity at Canadian Tire, mm-hmm. uh, Cup or Xfinity at Gateway. Like those are coming. Those are the first things I'm going to sit down and play. <laughs> Gateway. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm telling you because it's <laughs> it's that oblong shape. It's going to be interesting. Play that track. No. I do. I do. I, I, yeah, yeah. Well, man, and I, you know, I imagine though, just for Heat Four, I imagine it's going to be a lot better. See, Jacob Kerr agrees. <laughs> Cup at <laughs> Iowa and Gateway will be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Give that man five fictitious <laughs> fake dollars. Yeah. So right. let's talk about your lap at the gauntlet. Before okay. we play it, how do you how do you think you did? Okay. Well, at first, not very well. Um, uh oh. But you know, we're on the wheel here and the setup, and so it was definitely weird for me um, compared to being at home and stuff, but. Uh, we made some adjustments to the wheel, put it in manual because it was automatic. We got oh, it, we got it oh no! Um, and made some adjustments. Then actually, I feel like I put down a pretty decent lap. I'm, if I remember the lap correctly, I'm, I feel good about it. You feel good about yeah. it? Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look <laughs> at the world's fastest lap for Keffer at the gauntlet. Yeah. Nice and clean, though. So we take a look. There you are. Boy. Like, is this your? This is your lap, man. I'm not. I'm, we wouldn't give you a fake lap. Because oh, yeah. here you're coming off two. the final corner, or you going? You already went into right, one. Here no, here we go. Now you're going into one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So There's a lot of edits there. I don't know what happened on that. I gotta tell you what. You gotta use the, uh, the numbers. Really I cool, mean, if you, I mean, you know, what I noticed was if you try to like so on the back stretch into the into the the bu- the final bus first bus stop when you get to like five. If you're not really on the brakes, and I mean on game, the brakes and shifting down. You're not Definitely. gonna make it. Like, so were you it, counting it down as you were going? You're like I, well, one, you two. You, you have the numbers on the side. Yeah. So I'm, like, well, I'm at the five. I gotta get on it. And you really, because I tried it the first few times in my like, little warm up practice, and uh, it just sends it. So you really have to um, concentrate and get your breaking points. And <clears throat> and I think you know for guys that run on controllers and guys that run on wheels, you're really gonna yeah, want to adjust your your up. settings for here. But um, yeah, I mean it was fun. I, like I said, I think I got a pretty good lap time. But you'll see here, you'll see the numbers pop up. Well, you're coming through NASCAR two uh, one and two right now. Yeah, you're about to hit the back stretch, and I know watching you during your warm ups. So right here, this you was a little. Be, you have got to be slowing down there, and I think it, yep, I yeah, you the tapped the wall a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's better than your first run yeah. through there because your first one, I think you killed a tire I barrier actually somewhere. I forgot it was the Roval and went straight through. <laughs> he, uh, he's not joking. He yeah. actually yeah. drove straight yeah. through yeah. the tire yeah. barrier yeah. and almost. Yeah. Hey, there yeah. it is. Yeah. The little things for you, right? It's just the little nuances of the track. It's just like it shows that you know 704 took the time. To put the details in the game, that just every little detail, I think, is really. And awesome. here we go. What would? What's the time going to be? Boom! A one twenty three four. I think that puts you on top of the leaderboard, bro. I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah. I think it's you, John, and then yeah. Mike. What happened, Mike? Mike, you were supposed to stay the leader. Michael Levine is now in last place. Keffer. Yeah. High five, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Let's not do that awkward uh, one. That was awkward. Yeah, yeah. We'll work on that. You know, I'm I'm yeah. a high fiver. Air high five. Yeah, there boom, you go. There boom. Go. Teamwork. Touch elbows. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bash Brothers. There we go. <laughs> yeah. We're old enough to know that. Yeah. And, and I think Tommy Vincetti, uh, Vincetti said a great thing. Trucks at the Roval will be interesting. I didn't even think about that. I didn't that. actually think about that either. No. Yeah. That's actually, I, I think I have a new thing I want to do. Master, Tracks at the Roval. Master Killer says he can beat that. So uh, whenever you get your chance to get the game, be sure to post it hey, on Twitter. Hey, I want to see it, Master Killer. <laughs> yeah. Once the yeah, game comes out in September, and then, and then send it to me. We'll please, yeah, like <laughs> definitely. If you think you could beat Keffer, yeah. remember these guys are running on base setups. There are no pre; they're not building setups. They're yeah. running the base setups. What did you run there? Do you remember? 
what base setup you ran? No. Uh, whatever was in. Though. Okay, so you yeah. didn't even look. He didn't even look no. at the setup. He was just like, I'm running what I brought. Essentially, I got here. He was like, hey, here it is. You get like five minutes or ten minutes to mm -hmm. practice. And then it was like, go. And that was it. So. <laughs> and, and DW Knight, yes. Yes. To answer your question, yes. Uh, yes. I got you, bro. Uh, yes. What? Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he's been asking the question five times. Yes, yes. It's been there. You've seen it. You just haven't noticed it. I, we'll talk. Trust me. More details coming out for all the questions you got for Heat. More details, bro. I promise you we're still rolling into release. It's going to be awesome. But Keffer, you're the leader. You technically won a race, bro. <laughs> I hate to be that guy to you because hey, we're boys like that. Maybe but it's a good news for uh, coming you, up for Daytona, you know. Hey, that could be the mojo you need to put the car into victory yeah. lane. I want to thank you for coming out here at the Tireside Gathering, yeah. spending your time with us. Is there anyone you want to shout out for your social media, where they can follow you, track you, catch your well, adventures? Obviously, uh, you can follow, you know, follow me on, on Twitter. It's uh, Kefir Jason. Um, follow Junior Motorsports. And uh, actually, be sure to go to www.wendelljuniorsride.com uh, right now because there's only a few days left on the uh, the your chance to win Dell Juniors. Uh, ride obviously honestly so uh the tickets are on sale there you go there you can buy them and they'll have the drawing and uh, someone will be driving a brand new car here real soon is so. that is that literally like his ride like give me a little bit more like it's sitting out front of junior motorsports or at least they have it on what? display i think it's tucked away nice and out of the elements but um i've been there a couple of times and seen it. it's dude it's it's a sweet ride oh yeah. i may have to uh, can i enter that competition am i allowed <laughs> I to i think you can i don't uh, think i'm allowed to you, well you're technically a driver so i don't no, think it would work so, it would like yeah. me entering a competition for the pro league i can't yeah. do it so yeah Kefer, Thanks again, man. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a much. pleasure. Yeah. Thank you guys for hanging out, coming out to the Tireside Gathering. You can catch us in two weeks at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time right here on 704 NASCAR Heat. Make sure you turn in next week. Daytona is going to be a night race. It's the final race before the playoffs. Ten teams in, four teams go home. Who's going to come out on top that night? Look, this guy's already calling it right now. Make sure you turn in, tune in on our Facebook at Facebook NASCAR Heat and right here on Twitch, 704 NASCAR Heat. Don't forget, we also got some cool prizes that we're giving away during the show next week. We're going to be talking about that in more detail. Hopefully, we'll see this man in victory lane. Mm -hmm. Catch you next time. Kisses, hugs, and belly rubs. I'm Zane. Bye.